joining us live. The good captain herself, Ms. Kate Mulgrew. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, it's wonderful to see you all. And I am not often rendered uh, speechless, but in this moment I am. How many people have such a, a marvelous thing uh, done in their honor, in their memory, uh, as a, 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 I think, a, a wonderful comment on, on Janeway's legacy. I only wish I could be there with you. However, circumstances have prevented me from doing so, as you all know. I can't wait to see her. Who will do the unveiling? And then how will we judge? <laughs> Not the work. I know the work is, is superb, but I'm, I'm longing to see what Aaron has done. Who will unveil this uh, extraordinary accomplishment? Let's do it. Hey y'all, I'm Laura. I'm Bridget Anderson and I work with Patronicity. My name is Erin McDonald. I'm an astrophysicist and current science consultant for the Star Trek universe. My name is Pan East. I'm the executive director of the mill. I'm Mohamed Noor. I'm a science consultant for the Star Trek universe. Robert Picardo here. And I am delighted to appear virtually. When I think about it, I appeared virtually all seven seasons on Voyager. But that's another thing. I, I mean, I was a hologram after all. Captain Janeway inspired a generation of young women to pursue STEM. Everyone was inspired by Janeway's leadership. I know I was. Not only by her character's leadership, but Kate's leadership as an actress on our set. Janeway has probably been the biggest female role model for me. I learned the huge value of friendship and Captain Janeway was at the helm of that. Captain Janeway was the captain of the century. Janeway pushed new ideas on the term leader into the world at a time when we really needed that. The statue is located right near a children's science museum called Wonder Lab. How appropriate. Captain Janeway was really the one that got me through my PhD. I discovered Voyager when I was in graduate school. I was by myself, I was living in Scotland, I didn't know anyone. Akin to being lost in the Delta Quadrant, not knowing anyone, trying to find your way home, and needing to rely on science was something that really spoke to me. I stepped into my STEM career at a time when the female empowerment movement had been in full swing. And I owe so much to the women before me who took on those challenges, and I think Captain Janeway is the embodiment of those women. Janeway truly showed what it was like to be a captain. Keep your shirt tucked in, go down with the ship, and never abandon a member of your crew. She's been dragged across the galaxy. She has to lead not only her own crew, but a crew of people who she was hunting just moments earlier. And she does this with grace. They look up to her and they know that she is looking out for them. It was almost heartbreaking for me to watch this Starfleet captain and her crew get tossed. 70,000 light years away from their home, which at the time felt like what I was doing. And I felt like I had been tossed into the Delta Quadrant with them. Captain Janeway continues to get the acknowledgement from fans, from the community, and can have such a huge impact on people's lives, particularly when it comes to inspiring people to get into STEM fields. Hi, I'm Ryan Hamlet, and I'm so very glad that ICDA and Patronicity could help contribute to a project that adds a little whimsy to one of Indiana's most magical cities. What began as the pipe dream of a few intrepid fans, Mole grew into a reality. When IHCDA analyzed the fundraising data for this project, we found that seven of nine visitors to the site made a donation. To know that next generations of Trekkies will discover this monument on their Voyager along the Beeline Trail is beyond fantastic. Make no bones about it, the Captain Janeway monument is proof that if you can think of it, you can make it happen. Leaders in Bloomington and beyond have been inspired by Captain Catherine Janeway, and we hope this sculpture will continue to encourage our young people to reach for the stars. With the nod to equality, to the connection to IU, and it's just a really fun, cool, nerdy thing that I think everybody can rally around. Everybody loves Star Trek. It's uniquely Bloomington. She was an extra treat when moving to Bloomington. 
and she's a great connection to nerds all over the world. I'm proud and grateful that we can have a daily reminder of that in our town. I'm very delighted to appear at this unveiling of the Captain Janeway statue in Bloomington, Indiana. What a wonderful tribute to a wonderful character and a wonderful actress and friend, Kate Mulgrew. I've longed for years to raise a glass to her bust, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to do it now. To Ms. Mulgrew, to the Janeway statue, to everyone there today, my great affection and tribute. Hmm. Oh, Kate, you should try this. Absolutely knocked out. was in place, we knew that there were a handful of elements that needed to come together. We knew that it was going to be a limestone base, we knew that we wanted a stainless steel plate on the front, and we knew that the bronze was going to be fitting over the top of it. So we had to figure out each one as its own element because the different professionals don't work in all three of those mediums. The bronze process was definitely the longest process. Aaron Ebby, the artist who created the sculpt of Janeway's figure, he shipped us a oil-based clay and we were then able to create a mother mold from that. Then we needed to create a plaster backing. We poured molten wax into the vessel that went around the original sculpt. Once it's cooled, you then take off the mother mold again to create an exact replica of the original sculpt, which in this case now was just out of red wax. That all gets dipped in this liquid ceramic and then you sprinkle on a silica sand and you allow that to harden and then you do it again and again and again and, and every time you dip it gets thicker and thicker. The whole mold is heated in a kiln and as that mold comes up to temperature, all that wax that's inside leaves those vents. What's left is just the ceramic shell and the hollow area inside where the wax once was. And you've got this perfect vessel for recreating the wax now in metals. You use ingots of bronze, you've got all this molten metal, and once they're brought up to the same temperature together, that bronze then gets poured into the form, filling it from the bottom up. The metal hardens and cools and that leaves you a real raw casting. The bronze is then cut off of the sprues and then you sandblast and remove imperfections. And after it's sandblasted, it should look like an exact replica of the original sculpt. And the patina process is a process by which you force oxidation onto a metal by using certain acids and with the heat, you're able to control that process and get certain colors that we want. We use liver of sulfur, which causes the entire sculpture to turn dark black because the black is a great way to show the depth in the character. It shows shadow really well. But then you have to prime it and weatherproof it. Once we were able to scratch off some of the black, you heat it up with a massive blowtorch and we use that to heat up the bronze again and that removes everything that it's absorbed from the moisture in the air. We then applied a wax layer to it and did a few polishing effects, the glint in her eyes, her comm badge, her nails slightly, elements to brighten that metal up even more so. And that really completed the bronze casting side of things. The stone process is subtractive method. The stone had to come in a single block and was carved down from that. They were able to carve down the main pedestal stone and the base stone 
by really just cutting an outline around and then carving down some details. We've got this great insignia on the back side of the pedestal for the Federation of Planets and on the front side of the stone we had to carve in to accept the stainless steel plate that we were going to be attaching. It was cut out with a laser then it needed to be treated for the elements and so we went with a straight black powder coating that had a little bit of a glitter in it so that it looked like stars reflecting in the sun so all sides of this thing have some creative element to it that represents Star Trek. Then all the elements were combined together to create one sculpt and that's really all the components that have come together and all these different contractors in different areas that have come to do it. Everything has been building up to create this wonderful monument that we can now enjoy. I couldn't be more thrilled or more impressed. It is absolutely stunning. Where is the sculptor himself? Where's Aaron? May I convey to you my personal thanks. And on behalf of Janeway herself, who will uh, not be able to see herself for some time to come, uh, I, can, I can assure you that she will be stunned. It's an extraordinary likeness. Uh, you have rendered uh, Janeway to the fingernail. And uh, I am a very discerning uh, patron of the arts and you are indeed an exquisite artist. So I see that gathered here today is a vaunted group of both artists and geniuses, uh, not to mention visionaries. I could not be more moved or more thrilled I'm going to go up to my granddaughter today, hold her in my arms, look at her and say, uh, engage my love, engage. And wonderful things will happen. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us, thank you, thank, thank you for being with us and for your kind words. And we're so happy for you and your, your newest addition to your family. Thank you. And make me one promise, all of you, because we will be here when this pandemic subsides and it will subside. This too shall pass. And then I am coming physically to Bloomington. And we will gather again and we will indeed, with the, that very mischievous and wicked EMT, lift a glass of champagne. It will be on me. It will be on Janeway. God bless you all and red alert. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much.